Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, in this one, we put some new tires on and we put some new brakes on the general. So, the tire's been getting a little worn down. I've been running around on a spare because my tires are cracking. I'll show you that in the video on what's going on with those. And uh, the brakes were pretty worn down. And in reviewing the video, I thought I had an introduction, but in reviewing the video, I see that I go right into the process of doing the brakes. And I didn't tell you what I was doing. So, what I'm doing is some brakes. <laughs> so anyway, in this one, like I said, we're going to be putting some new brakes on and some new tires. And one more thing, you got to watch the video to find out. All right. So we'll go ahead and get to it. And I uh, hope you enjoy. Here we go. Okay, well, here's what the general looks like with the stock tires on it and my spare before I put the new tires on. So, you got a front tire on the back right now, and you got a back tire on the front. And I got a spare and you can tell how much tread is left on that tire compared to that tire I was kind of thinking those weren't <clears throat> weren't worn down very much but then when you get a brand new tire and I got all that tread like wow those tires are really worn so here's a close-up of what the problem is with this crawler FXG hopefully it shows in the camera but there's all these cracks and all these and this line right here is a crack so if I try to run that across there hopefully this is showing up you got all those cracks and I've tried a couple of different patches in this tire and that's part of what this stuff is it has industrial um like fix a flat in it turn it around see what the other side looks like oh yeah you can really see it over here now look at that see how how cracked up that is across there i mean that's crazy right here there's a bunch of the stuff that oozes out so i can't even drive a mile and this thing will go flat again and there and that's exactly what the other front tire is starting to do but I show no evidence at all of the XG's doing that they look great on the sidewalls you can flex these out you see nothing if I flex that one out like I drove that over something I don't know why that one hadn't started leaking you drive that tire over something and the crack just opens up and you're like why how is it still holding air so these ones seem to be holding up great so I uh, obviously went with the new set of the crawler XG's because I like the way they perform hopefully they last and then stepping up one size so here's a here's the 30 see if I can get it over here and hold the camera and the 32 so side by side it's not a giant difference but it it'll definitely make a difference in the way the vehicle looks it'll ride over stuff a little better and it'll rob a little bit of my low end torque but uh, hopefully it's not too bad so anyway I'll do one more walk around of this because it's like I say right now I don't have a spare because I'm driving with the spare on there that's the tire in one of my previous videos years ago that I got a 3 8 thick 8 inch long spike that went right in through the sidewall and then you're driving and you hear it every time you go around it hit the ground and make it hit the front the rim and it'd go tink 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 <laughs> so that was uh that was interesting so that one got patched a couple different times and what I learned was as long as I leave it uh, aired up hard like it is 
uh, the patch works on the sidewall. So I've been using that for my spare for years now. And I even, I've done rock crawling with that tire. I just don't air it down and it's still working. <clears throat> so I'll keep those back tires just in case I run across another set of used ones. Um, you know, maybe I'll have a couple spare 30s in case I don't like the way these 32s work. Uh, this tire has more tread than that front one does. But you can see it's it's getting down there pretty close. And the, the pattern on these, the weird thing is they're all 10 inch, but those ones, the ones that go on the front are actually 10 inch. The ones that go on the back and these new ones over here, they're actually nine and a half, even though they call them a 10. So, all right, well. All right, so right here what I'm doing is I had already took the pads off and then I realized oh I ain't pushed the piston back in yet so you want to make sure you clean the pistons off and then you push them back in but the important part why I'm adding this to the video because the first part of my video has disappeared <laughs> so uh there's a little set screw on the inboard side of the brake caliper, top and bottom. You got to back those off. Otherwise, the um, pad won't go far enough to remove them. And you'll see in the video where I talk about that later on, about the adjustment putting them back on. But I don't have anything that tells you about taking it off. So the little set screw, top and bottom, on the inboard side of the caliper, make sure you back that set screw off. Okay, we'll go back to the video. I put the pistons back, or I put the pads back on, and <clears throat> now I'm gonna compress these a little bit, and uh, I'm just gonna be taking the, the clamp, and you wanna make sure that your pistons are clean if you got a bunch of crap on them dirt mud sand whatever you gotta make sure they're clean otherwise you'll push that back into the caliper and then you're gonna have to replace the calipers um because they'll start leaking after that so then you get that cinched on there and then i'll just see very slowly like that I got pressure on it. I'm just going to real slowly push that in, and that's pushing the the fluid back up into the master cylinder. And this is per the Polaris manual. Um, some people will, and I've done that myself, will go to do this and just back off the bleeding screw. And then push them back that way but I'm gonna try it exactly the way the book calls it out so you're going in real slow and then you gotta keep an eye on your fluid level you don't want that to bubble over the top but if you've never had to add any fluid to it it should all go back in there because that's you know where it came from without overflowing as the level goes down there's a little if you're not familiar there's a little uh plastic no not plastic there's a little rubber piece in the cap and as the fluid goes down it sucks that rubber piece down with it and that kind of keeps some of the pressure on the um, fluid in there so i'm just going to slowly keep walking this back I get those done and I'll bring you back and show you the next part. Okay, so those were pushed all the way in. Pistons won't go anymore. Just going slowly so that the fluid can just sneak on by. You don't want to go too fast and possibly invert a seal or make it bubble out of the top. But anyway. That's that's pretty straightforward. Just do that here, and then pop 
that off of there. And then these will come right back off again once you slide this all the way over to one side. Okay, and I'm going back on with factory brake pads. So these are standard Polaris front brakes and the HD back brakes. I didn't get any aftermarket brand. Um, these seem to work real good. I read, read lots of reviews online and forums and all kinds of stuff. And you probably know you get mixed mixed things with forums. There's good, there's bad. You got to kind of weed through it. But uh, I just decided to go with the factory ones because nobody knew. Even when I asked a, a dealer, they... They didn't know, so I'll keep researching and try to figure out what they are. Or if someone out there knows, maybe you can let me know. I was wondering what kind of material these are. Because, you know, maybe they're just ceramic. Or, what is that other one? Sneered or centered or, I don't know, S S I N something. Anyway, which I never heard of until side-by-side -side breaks. But, I don't know what kind of material they are. If you get too hard of a material, you're just going to wear your rotor out faster. But if you're putting larger tires on or you're carrying heavy loads or you're trailering or something, it may be necessary to put a better brake on there that will grab it more and you'll just have to replace the rotor more often. So um, since I am going up one size on the tire, I might find out that uh, I should have gone with a different brake. But. I figured it was safe just staying with the factory ones for now and now I know for sure they're not hard to change and these come with the I don't know if you noticed that when I was holding that in my hand a minute ago where's the other one and don't touch the pads and you know you got dirty dirty hands while you're working on this but it already has pad on the back so hopefully I won't be doing any squeaking, so don't don't touch those. You don't want any oil on those or anything like that. And uh, this side here, I don't think it'd hurt if you touch, but I try not to touch anything but the sides myself. But you just get that manipulated in there. Make sure both sides are pushed down. Slide that up in there like that. Line it up. Same thing over here. Voila, they're on. Then kind of spread them apart. Make sure your rotors are clean. So some of this stuff I've done off camera. And then just slide those on. And then like I said, I'm just going to take a wire brush. I'm going to clean these up a little bit. And then I'll put a couple drops of Loctite on them. Throw these things back together. Torque them to 30. And... Then I'll do that back one back there. And then after that, when I'm doing that one, if there's something different than this that I think you might want to know about, I'll go ahead and show you real quick. But that's the idea. Unless I see something back there, I won't bring you back till after I pump these up because I'm real curious how that'll be. Put a little pressure on them, and then you're supposed to adjust that screw that I mentioned earlier. So we'll see how that works out. So we'll bring you back in a little bit. Okay, so I'll just get the torque wrench on there, it's set to 30. Nice little click, good to go. Little click there, good to go. Okay, I lied, I said I wasn't going to bring you back until later. Brought you back anyway, just in case you don't know how a torque wrench works. There we go. Okay, now I'll do what I said earlier. Okay, so there was nothing here any different than what I showed you, but... If you're paying attention, you'll see something shiny here that wasn't here before. So another thing I'm trying is I'm going to try some comfort, com, confrontational, confrontational uh, <laughs> wheel spacers. So what I really wanted is my spare tire is on a wheel that is 7 inch, so it is uh, 4 plus 3. So it pushes the wheel out three. The stock one is six plus one. So with my spare tire, I'm two inches wider 
on this side. This is an inch and a half spacer. So if I had all the money in the world, I would have bought some bead locks that pushed me out to where I wanted to be. But the advantage to going with a spacer is if I go somewhere that is got a designated trail with, like when I went to Utah to the Arapine Trail, if I'm running these in my vehicle, which will make my vehicle too wide to do those trails, if I bought wheels, I would have to have a different set of wheels to be able to put on, which was my first thought. My first thought was, you buy the wheels, the bead lock that you want, so you can air down, you can do all this stuff. But I've run these tires, the smaller sized, uh, aired down really low before, side hill and all kinds of stuff. They've never pulled a bead. they got a pretty strong bead lip on them. <laughs> um, so then the thought was, okay, I keep my eyes out for another use two tires, and then I can have those four 30 inch tires on stock wheels for if I go to some trails. But as you saw earlier, the difference in tread is night and day. Those tires are way more worn than I originally thought, which is pretty common until you get a new tire. You don't really realize how worn out your tires are. Um, but with this method, I can have my width to give me more stability if I'm rock crawling and stuff like that, but if I'm going on a trail where I need to be narrower, I just pull these things off. Or if I'm putting my paddles on and I don't want them sticking way out there because they're already wide because my back tires are 10 inch for my paddles. The, the paddles are 30 by 12 and they're on a 15 by 10, five plus five. So the back wheel sticks out four inches farther plus the tires an inch wider so in theory my back tires stick out five inches wider than my stock wheels front tire i don't have front sand tires yet uh, if you've been watching my channel you'll see that i have some sand tires on here sometimes but those are actually my buddies which that razor that's always in my shop belongs to so those are a seven inch wheel and they push it out three inches so my front is wider when I go on the sand my back is wider when I go on the sand so if we both go to the dunes and he wants to run his sand tires which makes sense I can put my stock uh, tire on if I can find some stock wheels I can put my stock dirt tires on the two that I kept and I can put this spacer on, and that'll give me my width in the front to have the stability in the sand, which, you know, in the sand you do a lot of that side hilling, so the width is really nice in the sand. Uh, the downside is it changes your geometry of your suspension. you got to adjust your springs or your shocks a little more. But it's not a whole lot different than if you were to go with a long travel. So if you're, if you're pushing your tire out here, you've actually gained more travel in your suspension which is what a long travel suspension does it pushes this point out farther and then you got more travel you know in here it's only going to go like this but out here it's going like this you get the gist anyway it just gives me some adjustability and it's way cheaper and if i don't like it i just take them off I did some drawing on the computer, playing with the tire being bigger and the swing in the stock position versus being out here, which I thought would actually make it worse. But on paper or on the computer screen, it actually has a little bit more clearance from hitting that spot right there. That's the spot I'm worried about hitting. If it rubs out here, it ain't going to matter. But if it rubs here, especially if you're going backwards, you could pop that loose. Um, so that's the spot I'm worried about. So we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll like them, maybe I won't. Uh, it's a lot cheaper option. So these are on and I did learn something when I did the back ones. It's, when I got to that one, I experimented and it was the only one that I didn't back that set screw up in this. It's like, 
What happens if you don't back that off? I wasn't able to get the pads out because it didn't allow this piece to slide into the caliper far enough. So, so move you over here a little bit and tilt you down a little bit. See if I can get you seasick. So this area here, this caliper slides back and forth on, okay? And with that set screw out, you're able to get this to slide far enough that this will come off. So with that set screw in there, this won't come off. So I had to back it out to get it off. So I learned something. Now as far as pumping the brakes up until the pedal gets firm, and then going and adjusting that screw until the stationary pad touches still doesn't make any sense to me because they were already touching but i ran it in and you can run that in so much that your tire don't turn so what i wound up doing is i ran it in and then i kept um move it okay something shell <laughs> the other tires on the ground <laughs> okay anyway I started moving this back and forth and then I would turn it a little and move it back and forth until I noticed resistance. So what it says is you go until they touch and then you back off a half a turn. So I went until they were dragging more and then I backed off a half a turn. We'll see what happens. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that, that wrench with me when I go out so I can always adjust that if I need to. Um, so that's my my plan B. So, got this on here, and on the other side, I've got some tires, and what was in the back I was going to show you? Oh, let me, let me take you to the back. Okay, hopefully there's enough light. So, what I had to do is, I mentioned earlier how I had different sockets. Well, the issue is different on each side. So with this one, I'm able to get around that nut. With the deep socket, see it don't fit on there. It's at an angle. But then on the bottom, I had to take it off and I run just the regular socket down here. And then to get my torque wrench in, that was a whole nother issue. So I suggest if you do this, you have a 15 deep socket, a 15 standard socket, a short extension, and then you'll be able to get it done. And of course, six points are best. I hate these 12 points. Six point don't round off. But you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, that was all I learned back here that was different than the back. I mean, different than the front. And of course, the brake is a lot smaller, which is pretty common because the front does most of your stock. This is two, two pistons, and the brake pad's only this big. <coughs> okay, so I'll give you a peek at the other side, what that looks like. Kind of hard to see inside the shop, but this side's got the wheel spacers on it, and see how the tire... Hopefully you can see how the tire is sticking out past the flare just a hair. Just a hair past those uh, Nerf bars. Just a hair past the front flare. So you got a lot of extra width. And stability. Went up one inch, but I went out an inch and a half. So it'll be, theoretically, it'll be more stable than it was stock. From the factory so I still have to burnish the pads so I'll have to read up on that let me get my little stool over here okay so the next thing I'm supposed to do is burnish these pads so it's some sort of break-in period I haven't read about it yet so I'll take the service manual probably tonight read that figure out how that's supposed to be done I think you're supposed to drive a certain amount of miles, probably apply the brake. I don't know. I'll share that with you when I know. Um, and 
I'll put the I'll put the other tires on and then the next time you see me I'll probably have the machine outside with all the tires on so I can do a walk around because there'll be a clip in here of the stock tires being on here and then I'll try to park in the same spot and show you with these tires on here um, just the tire being full of tread versus how worn they were is a difference because you'll see in the video maybe you'll be able to tell in the video when I did the walk around with the stock tires um, this wheel right here has got the spare on it and when you're looking at it from the side this tire looks like it's considerably bigger than the other tires on the machine. And that's just because it had tread. <laughs> These tires have really tall tread. Uh, so it makes a big difference. And I thought the machine looked beefier when I got it, when it was brand new, when it had tread. Anyway, I'm rambling on now. So we'll put this thing all together. I'll find out about burnishing. I'll share this all with you, and we'll come back probably tomorrow. All right, here we go. Oh, so I'm going to go up and down the road a little bit to burnish in the brakes. So what I found with burnishing the brakes is I'm 55 years old, and I have never heard of burnishing the brakes. And if I have, nobody explained it to me. So apparently this is something that should have always been doing <clears throat> there has been breaks i've done over the years that after i do them I'm like not very impressed so i read a bunch of things i watched some videos i watched one from a a company that does it professionally for race cars learned a bunch of different things about it and one of the things that i learned from the company that does the race cars is you don't stop and if you look in the Polaris manual it'll tell you to go like 30 miles an hour and then come to a stop and then go 30 miles an hour and come to the stop the race people tell you don't come to a stop because what you're doing is you're heating the brake pads up to bed the brakes into the rotor and maybe leave a little bit of the brake material on the rotor so that they work better. And if you come to a complete stop, it can actually leave a, if you got them nice and hot, it can leave a imprint of the brake on the, on the rotor, which of course is not what you want. So my research, I've come up with what you want to do is um, go up to 30 miles an hour and then go down to 5 and up to 30 and down to 5 and up to 30 and down to 5 do that to warm them up so I'll go ahead and head down the road here do a little test make sure I have brakes Since this camera is not good at night, you might only be able to see that that gauge. You might not even be able to see the road. And it said to do it like no more than 10 times in a mile. 
this is a one mile stretch and I'm actually not counting because I'm talking on the to the camera so you do that and then you let them cool and then you do it again so I think I'll let them cool now I'll turn around up here and head back the other way. Well, I can say it is definitely nice and smooth right now. Tires have 20 pounds in them. Nice even tread. <clears throat> Running nice and smooth. So now I'm going to go through it again. And I know I'm not coming down to exactly 5 mile an hour, but... thing off because you can't really see anyway and finish doing this. have it that is sitting an inch taller and it's sitting an inch and a half wider on each side so it's three inches wider and it's one inch taller and boy what a difference it makes in its appearance now granted the tires that were on it were worn out 30s so they're quite a bit shorter and these are pumped up hard because i'm going to leave them like this until i get to my destination and then i'll lower them down to where i want i'll probably run them at eight they're at 20 right now but the 
the beads were squeezed, they were pinched. So I'm leaving them out for a while to, you know, hopefully try to give them a memory. Uh, so there we go. That's what it looks like. So the burnishing of the brakes. What do I think about that? So I went up and down the road a couple times and some of the ones you read tell you, you know, you like brake hard, accelerate, brake hard, accelerate. Then other ones will tell you, e, uh, slowly accelerate and moderately brake. And some will tell you to do it 10 times. Some will tell you to do it 10 to 30 times. I don't know. I don't know what to think. I kind of took a happy medium on all the information I found. If you look at the, the information for the Pro, the newer Razor Pro, it tells you not to stop. It tells you to slow to 5 mile an hour, speed up to over 20 five mile an hour but they also say don't do it more than three times in a mile I thought it was ten times in a mile so who knows I did notice after my second run down doing it that they seem to be grabbing a little better I could smell a little bit of them hopefully that wasn't the belt I was smelling shouldn't it have been <laughs> I could uh, smell them a little bit it seemed like they were breaking a little bit better so we'll see. I'm going to be heading out in the woods and we'll see how they do. The good thing is in the woods, when you're on the dirt, you can hit the brakes and see if they're acting even or if you're dragging the back or dragging the front or dragging one tire. And that's probably where the adjusting screw could come in on the side of the caliper. So I, like I said earlier, I am going to take the wrench with me for that adjusting screw. So if I got one wheel that don't seem like it's doing much, I might try just bumping that screw a little bit, which will pinch the brakes just a hair more. So we'll see. It's a learning experience, learning curve. I don't know why I have the rock lights on. So anyway, that's new Polaris front brakes, heavy duty Polaris back brakes, new 32, 10, 5, not 10, 5, 32, 10, 15 pro armor, crawler XG's uh, 30 inch is stock on a lot of the machines that are a couple years older um, and that stock on the rear of this so we'll run those and see how those do and we'll catch you on the next one hope this was helpful to someone out there and I will report back and let you know if I got any rubbing problems so. okay so here's what it looks with the uh, New tires on it, wheel spacers, brand new brakes. So, it's got a little, little better looking stance. You got the Kimi Moto Nerf bars on there. With the hitch in the back. This side here is a little darker, but still, you can see a little better looking stance. See if you can see anything from the front. The lighting isn't great right now, but yeah, it's definitely a, a wider stance. Tires stick out a little bit now, even stick out past the Nerf bars. So normally those tires don't stick out past the flares. So this right here, you can see how much room we have there. I'm going to turn that tire the right direction. Turn that in there. So hard over stuff that wheel the tire is going to come really close to that plastic right there maybe hit maybe not mathematically it'll clear but I don't know exactly if those things run straight up and down if they run slightly one way or another when they go up and down I would guess they go straight up and down but anyway we're gonna find out because that's what's on here so there's that, and then uh, this is the day after I put them on, and I already went and did the burnishing for the brake pads, which I'd never even heard about after 55 years of life. 
working on vehicles forever. Nobody told me. <laughs> so I did go up and down the road. I'll throw some clips in here of that going up and down the road, trying to burnish them in. And uh, I believe in those clips I'm explaining what the process is. So they did get a little bit better. So now I'm just finishing loading up. Uh, getting everything together. Got the Toya hauler out still and the truck with the rack on it still. So we're going to go ahead and get everything together, get loaded up, get ready to go on a trip. All right. Hope this is helpful to someone. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And we will catch you on the next one. All right. Have a good day.